10 Hidden Details of Arcane Who would have thought that characters from League of Legends would become a TV show? Even if you're not a player of the game, you will definitely enjoy this show. However, if you haven't seen it yet, we warn you that this video contains some spoilers. Said that we are going to show you some of the many easter eggs and hidden details in the show that many of you didn't notice. Rivers and Mighty Towers In the opening scene, our main characters Vi and Powder are walking across the bridge between the two main nations of the show, Zaun and Piltover, where the war between them took place, killing the girl's parents. In this scene, there is a song that's being hymned, which is called Dear Friend Across the River. The song is a reference to rivers and mighty towers, which are two key map elements from the game. Benzo's Shop There are many little details hidden in Benzo's store. In the scene where the little man, who is also known as Echo, is first introduced, we see him fixing a clock, which is a hint to his character in the game, who has everything to do with time. On episode 7, when Echo fights Jinx on the bridge, the beginning of their fight is played out and then it gets rewinded, showing how his ultimate ability works in the game, where he can go 4 seconds back in time. The object Benzo is examining is actually an old now non-existent item called Heart of Gold. Oddly enough, he's gone not much longer after this scene. At the back of Benzo's shop, there is an obvious reference to one of the most common items in the game, Rabadon's Death Cap. And right above the entrance door, there is an object that belongs to none other than Trindamir, one of the original champions in the game. In the sequence when the Inforces come into the Benzo's shop, Echo tries to listen to their conversation and spy through a camera installed inside one of the three masks, two which resembles two items from the game Leandris Torment and Hunting Guys. Jice's Hammer The place our favorite game breaks into belongs to Jice, who we meet in episode 2 while Powder is searching for important objects. She comes across a sandwich and can't help herself. While she reaches to get the snack, did you notice the easter egg? On the table are blueprints to Jace's iconic hammer from the game, and the same one that we later see burst out in that epic fight with Vi in episode 8. Runeterra Incognium When the kids are running through the Incognia Plaza, you see a nice-looking statue in the middle which is called the Runeterra Incognion. Well, turns out that this statue was there not only for decoration, but to be able to locate any individual in the world. But guess what? The entire first act of Arcane is about finding the four kids who caused the incident. Seems like the lifetime work of Valentina Zindelo is just a piece of decoration now. Nice shot, Cupcake! In this scene, when Vi, Powder, Clagger and Milo are jumping over the rooftops, we can see cupcakes which references to Caitlyn, who in the game Yordi snap trap with a little cupcake in the center of it. Of course, we later meet Caitlyn in the show who Vi nicknamed as Cupcake as well. These cupcakes are also similar to the ones we see in Bittersweet's Lulu Splash Art and in the music box Jinx made in the final episode of the season. And least but not last, cupcake reference in the game. If Vi survives a shot from Caitlyn's ultimate abilities, she shouts. Nice shot, cupcake! Timor references. The first reference to everyone's most loved mushroom contains sarcasm. Is when Powder runs away from the fight with Deckard and his goons. There is a picture of a mushroom on the wall, which is of course a reference to Devil Champion Timo. Timo was one of the original 17 champions of the game, and his ultimately ability to place invisible mushrooms all across the map makes him one of the most annoying champions to play against. But this is not the only Timo reference we see in Arcane. We can see it on the lanes when the kids are heading home, while Powder plays some arcade game with Timo on it, in the book in Marcus's daughter's womb, and last on the wall of the Firelight's base. Fish bones. In the following scenes after Benzo's place, Jinx is adjusting her gadgets, and we can get a shot of her pillows 
in which one of them look very similar to a rocket launcher from the game Fish Bones. Don't you think? Singed At the end of the episode 1, we finally meet our main villain, Silco. Seems like he's having a conversation with a scientist who does not have a name at first. Although, if you watch this show with closed captions, you will find out that this scientist is none other than Singed, another character from the game. Vi's real name Vi's name had never been formally announced before Arcane's release. However, in this scene where Powder is really upset for being left behind from her sister and the others, we get a shot of a little box of Powder's things and the first thing we see is Vi's full name on a piece of paper. And the second thing we see are two wings, which are a reference to the Star Guardian Jinx skin. By the way, that skin has two mascots associated with it, called Shiro and Kiro, or white and black in Japanese. Isn't that a coincidence that Powder and Jinx are two opposite personalities too? Powder's Dark Side At the end of episode 3, after Vi leaves Powder behind, the little girls find Consul in Silco's arms. And I guess that's when she officially becomes Jinx. After being called so by her sister, you get a shot that highlights her eye as they turn from grey to purple. Foreshadowing episode 8, where Jinx is infused with Shimmer after she barely survived in the battle on the bridge with Echo. And that's all for today! What did you think of season 1 of Arcade? Let us know in the comments below!